Hi, everyone. This is Janelle Penny, senior writer for Buildings, back with another Buildings podcast. My guest today is Mike East. He is an account manager with the Building Solutions Division of Rayhow, and he's supported many commercial facilities with radiant heating, snow and ice melting, and pre-insulated distribution piping systems. But today we're going to focus on the snow and ice melting aspect. Mike, what is hydronic snow and ice melting exactly? Yeah, good question. So hydronic snow melting system, basically it's a network of, of pipes that we're going to put in the surface that we want to be snow melted. And that's embedded inside of that surface. And heated fluid is going to circulate through that piping system uh, when there's a demand for a snow melting uh, situation. And it's going to keep that area free free of snow and ice uh, before, during, and following any kind of snow event. Great. So how does it work exactly? This piping system is going to be connected to a heat source somewhere in the building. Uh, Typically, that's going to be a gas-fired boiler most commonly, but it could also be maybe an older building or areas where steam heating is used. Uh, where we're connecting to through a heat exchanger um, or a ground source heat pump, but a a appliance that's going to heat the fluid um, is connected to this network of piping. And then there's a circulator involved and a control system that can automatically detect when the conditions are, are, are uh, ripe for a snow event. So it's going to look at air temperature, moisture and the slab temperature itself and if all of those conditions are suitable for potential snow then the system will initiate and the heated fluid will circulate through those pipes from the boiler back out to the piping system and it'll maintain a surface that's warm enough that the snow will never really be allowed to accumulate great well that sounds like a benefit for sure are there other reasons why someone would want to buy one of these well, yeah, so there's for the building owner, the homeowner or the building owner, there's a lot of reasons why you would want to have a snow melting system. So falls, accidental falls are the number one uh, cause of injury in the United States by a long shot. So just having this system that is going to automatically stay ahead of snow and ice on public surfaces where people may be coming in and out of a building is going to potentially reduce a lot of potential liability. So this is the kind of enhancement to the building owner's life that's going to give them that peace of mind that they're not going to have to worry about someone getting injured coming in and out of their property. And it's going to protect their property because they're not going to have to use alternative means, uh, chemicals, salts, things of that nature on their surfaces that will ultimately damage them and wear wear them down over time. Um, and so it'll help protect their investment in their property over time as well. And then the convenience, um, that's going to be a benefit for anyone who has this system, just to know that they're not going to have to be out there either, you know, with their own maintenance staff, removing snow or having to arrange to get snow, snow removal services on the site to take care of that situation. It just happens automatically. Absolutely. So do you find that there are trends in the areas where these are installed or even the type of building that would typically install the hydronic snow and ice melting? Yeah, we do. So traditionally, you could imagine the places where these systems would be optimized, areas that have a critical need for access no matter what the the weather. So you're thinking about a hospital, a helipad at a hospital or an emergency room entry where those vehicles need to for sure be able to get in and out safely at all times. So that was some of the the traditional areas where these systems would be applied. But what we're finding out now, and we're seeing more and more more typical spaces having the application for snow and ice melt systems going in. So we're seeing them now in schools, in uh, businesses, uh, multi-use living, commercial type facilities. We're involved in the project in downtown Denver right now, where it's a mixed use high rise building, where it's gonna have commercial space on the lower end and an open plaza and residential units up above. They'll snow melt that entire plaza 
to give the guests easy access in and out of the building and for the commercial patrons who will come into those businesses. So we're seeing it really in any sir, any area where you're going to have public traffic coming in and out of a building and there's a chance that you'll have snow during your winter months. Uh, these systems are going in and even residentially in people's driveways and walkways. I'm sure it beats shoveling a driveway for sure. Um. <laughs> Absolutely. I I had the opportunity to uh, have my driveway uh, resurfaced and I took that opportunity to put a uh, snowmelt system in at that time. And I can tell you firsthand, it is nice to not have to deal with that. Nice. So what about materials? You know, we talked about building types, but is it more common to put it in, let's say, concrete or can you put it in any surface? Well, yeah, just about any surface that you would have um, in an exterior of a building. Concrete is going to be the most common and it's easy to apply, you know, the pipes into that construction method. The pipes are laid down before the concrete is poured and the pipes are simply embedded in the concrete during that installation. But other surfaces that are common, especially in resort areas, um, a paver system. Um, we can absolutely snow melt underneath uh, a paver system. So typically at that time, the pipe is put out on the subgrade and then a bed of sand is laid over the top of the pipe and then the pavers sit in that bed of sand. And we can effectively melt snow in that installation. And even asphalt, it's possible to install uh, a, this piping system in an asphalt surface. Some precautions have to be made during the installation to circulate uh, chilled fluid through the, the piping system when they're pouring the hot asphalt. But we do something similar. The pipes are in a sand bed and the asphalt is poured on top. We chill the pipes as the asphalt is going down due to its heat. But then after that, we can have an effective snow melting system even under asphalt. So virtually any surface that you might have exterior to a building is a potential surface to apply a snow melt system. Great. So the comment about uh, resurfacing your driveway made me wonder, Do you can you install this as a retrofit or does it usually have to be new construction? Like let's say I'm going to redo a parking lot at a commercial building. Um, how tough would it be to retrofit something like this? Yeah, so ideal the ideal time, the most cost-effective time is certainly going to be on a new build situation. For instance, when you're pouring the concrete in the driveway for a new building and you want to put snow melt in there, the, the cost is just essentially the pipe itself and nothing else really needs to change about your installation method and your building process. So uh, that's going to be the lowest possible cost. Now, if you have an existing slab, and we've, I've been involved in a project that was the pull-through self-wash car wash stations where... There's always moisture there. There's always ice. The owner wanted to keep that a safe environment for customers to come in and out. So wanted a snow melt system in there. In that situation, we were able to lay the pipe down and pour a relatively thin topping slab over the top of an existing slab and sort of retrofit a, an existing slab uh, with a, a topping slab. Now, not every site would allow the opportunity to have the space or the elevations to add a topping slab, but it certainly can be done. And But the, the key thing is that the pipe will need to be somewhere in the thermal mass. So either a topping slab, if it's a retrofit situation, or they would actually have to be, you know, wanting to remove existing concrete and, and at that time take the opportunity to put the piping system in before the, the pour kind of came in after the fact. Great. So are there any last things that people should keep in mind or special considerations to take into account regarding a hydronic snow and ice melting system if you're thinking about installing something like this? Yes, absolutely. So these systems, there's a fair bit that goes into them logistically. And this is the type of system that is perfectly suited for what Ray is all about as a company. And that's a design engineer system that can help enhance our customers' lives 
and give them a better performing building and reduce their exposure to liability and create a, a better experience for the building owner. And so to bring in someone um, like some of the personnel at Rayhow to help advise, to think about there's other considerations. In other words, how that piping grid needs to be installed, There's it needs to be broken up into zones and there's manifolds that are going to have to feed it. And where is the heat source located in the building? And how are we going to get from that heat source inside the building out to the exterior area outside the, the building that we want to snow melt? All of those concerns and issues there are solutions for, but it's helpful to involve someone who can help think through all of those potential issues to make sure that the building actually is suitable and there is a realistic way to employ one of these systems in a building. We've often seen um, building designs come out where uh, a set of plans has a shaded area saying we want snow melt here, but little else was considered as far as the practicality of actually getting that piping network to that area and getting the heated fluid from the source to that space. So getting someone involved who is an expert in understanding what all it takes to put these systems together is, I'd say, probably the most important uh, advice that I'd give to anyone who's thinking they might have an application that would be appropriate for a snowmelt system. So Mike, where can we learn more? You can learn more by visiting us at our, at our website at www.na.rayhow.com backslash S-I-M. Great. Mike, thanks so much for joining me today. And thanks to you out there for listening. Check out buildings.com to hear some of our past podcasts or subscribe to us on Google Play, iTunes, or Pocket Casts. You'll never miss an episode. 